Football has just gone into hyperdrive. Let's get into it. Hello, welcome to Omni Edson. I hope you're all well. If you like what I do here, don't forget to like and share the video, subscribe to the channel, and hit the notifications bell for all future videos. So, football has just kind of gone into hyperdrive the last few days uh, with uh, some big news uh, coming at us. So, let's dig into it. Mbappe is leaving PSG. There's also been a bit of handbags at dawn, it appears, over the last year as well. Uh, in with him and the club, uh, things hasn't been great behind the scenes. But he's going to Real Madrid. He's reportedly going to be on over £500,000 a week. £500,000 a week. It could be... 600 650 depending on all the other add-ons because he's going to get money from image rights and shirt sales and all that kind of stuff this is absolutely insane he's on a five-year deal there he's uh getting uh, tw over 12 million pounds a year and also he's getting a sign-on bonus of something in the region of about 120 million as well i mean it's just absolute bonkers but there we go so mbappe to real madrid now now, here's the question. How good are Real Madrid going to be with Mbappe? I mean, wouldn't it be funny, really, if he went there and he was a complete flop? I don't think he is. But it's a lot of money to pay, of course, just for one player. I and mean, this is not the first time big money's been paid for one player, of course. But I think he's got to be... I mean, there's no transfer fee on this, so he won't be breaking any transfer records. But in terms of... He's got to be the highest paid footballer, right? Or maybe not, when, especially when you consider Ronaldo going to uh, Saudi Arabia. Maybe not. So it's it's a lot of money. He's, what, 25, 26, and we go to Real Madrid? Yeah, I mean, they're going to be a force to be reckoned with again, aren't they? I mean, they've just won the Champions League. They won the La Liga. Carlo Ancelotti. What do we think Carlo Ancelotti? Is he really the best manager that there's ever been? You're kind of comparing him to... Fergie, you're kind of comparing him to Pep Guardiola, but I think he's actually won more. He certainly won more European titles uh, than them as player and as as coach. So yeah, he's kind of right up there, isn't he? In in terms of the the best that's ever been. But look, there's some other massive news from the managerial uh, front. Mourinho, Jose Mourinho, he's gone to Turkey, he's gone to Fenerbahce, and what a character he is as well, and he's going to bring the noise to them, and I'm sure they're going to bring the noise to him as well, uh, so he's back in the mix, and he, he's basically come out in his, uh, in his press conference saying, I am not taking any players whatsoever from Roma, I don't want any of those players, so God knows what what they've said to him at Roma, or what some of the players have said. I thought there was quite a, quite a good relationship with some of those players, but obviously not. Uh, so it'd be interesting to see what kind of players that come into Fenerbahce and how they're going to fare in the domestic league. But really, we know what uh, Jose Mourinho is all about. It's about European competition as well. And, and traditionally, the Turkish sides haven't really gone that far uh, in uh, the European competition, certainly not on a consistent basis. Um, so you would think, well, they're going to be in the Champions League uh, next season because they finished second in the league. How far can he take them? And that's the thing. If they were probably in a Europa League or in a Conference League, then you would probably give them a lot more of a, a chance of winning a European trophy. But a Champions League with Fenerbahce? No, I, I don't think. If he gets past the quarterfinals, I think you've done very well. The other big managerial appointment has been Antonio Conte. He's gone to Napoli. Now, what you've got to understand about Napoli, Napoli is like a country in itself in terms of the way the rest of Italy regard Naples and, and the way the Neapolitans and Napolitani, where, where they regard the rest of Italy as well. They kind of are their own, their own entity. So the further there is going to be absolutely intense. They won the league uh, two seasons ago. Obviously, they didn't win the league uh, last season. A kind of disappointing... Uh, campaign really for them really so now they've uh, they've got Conte who's got a lot brings going to bring a lot of passion he thinks it's a fantastic job so we'll see how, how he does that I mean, it's going to be a tough ask it's going to be uh, a, a tough uh, job just to get them to the very top but uh, yeah 
Interesting times there for a Napoli fans. Interesting times for Conte as well. And we're still waiting to hear about uh, Ten Hag, Eric Ten Hag, at Manchester United. Whether he's going to still going to have a job. Many of the teams right now are releasing their the, a lot of their players. They're, they're all releasing some of the players that just haven't done well, some of the academy players, that kind of thing. Uh, we've got some teams who are uh, releasing uh, lists of players that they're keeping as well. So obviously we're in the transfer market, the window now. So there's going to be lots of uh, to and fro and over the next uh, couple of months. Let's not forget the big distraction that is the Euros, uh, which is coming in what a couple of weeks. We're just going through some international friendlies uh, right now. England uh, played the other night. They beat uh, uh, Bosnia. 3-0. All the other nations were in action as well. I'm um, the one that I was really focused on because I'm an Italian supporter. Italy against Turkey and a disappointing nil-nil draw uh, for Italy and for, and for Turkey. Actually, uh, both teams probably would want to come away with a win and certainly being able to score some goals there. We'll have to see what happens uh, in the subsequent games. So there's another round of games this coming weekend as well. Uh, so I believe England are playing on Saturday, Italy are playing on Sunday and then obviously it's final preparations for the the uh, Euros, so say, will start in a couple of weeks' time. I mean, I still believe that England have the best chance of winning the competition. Uh, I still think they're a little lopsided in, in terms of their weaknesses in defence, uh, not defensive midfield, because I think they've got probably one of the best defensive midfielders in the world, uh, which is, of course, Declan Rice. Uh, but I think from the midfield going forward, I think they're a, a force, especially if they're, everybody is playing. There's lots of lots of comments uh, being made after the England game from some of the fans saying, well, they didn't play you know, all the, the best players, they didn't play all the top players well you don't have to you know these are friendlies first of all and you've got to try out other players as well but also the likes of Bellingham has just come off a, a Champions League final you know there's there's you know you don't have to play them all I would expect Bellingham to play in the next game uh, England will, will be playing so they're playing Iceland so yeah you would expect an England win there as well and then they've got the opener against uh, Serbia on the 16th of June I believe so yes uh, less than two weeks uh, away now and uh, yeah it's ramping up so you know we've got managerial uh, comings and goings already we've got players that are starting to come uh, and go uh, clubs starting to uh, put the hammer down and, and uh, make their choices we got uh, Moresco that's just gone to Chelsea let's see what they do uh, next season Slot has gone into Liverpool as well as uh, as manager it's it's almost like there's um there's been a lot of managerial changes this this season more than more than I can remember in a long time certainly at the big clubs and then we're going to be seeing well what players can they bring in and how are they going to fare next season? You would imagine the likes of Mbappe going to Real Madrid can only make them so much stronger, so much better. But sometimes these things just don't work out the way you think. So we'll see. It'd be interesting to see in the La Liga how Barcelona and the likes of uh, Atletico Madrid, how they respond as well. Um, Barcelona have got their uh, new manager as well, Hansi Flick. So, yeah, let, let's see how they respond and can they uh, close the gap uh, on uh, Real Madrid and, uh, well, take La Liga and uh, obviously do a lot better in, in Europe as well than they have been of late. So the, the European League seems to be uh, uh, ramping up. I suppose the, the biggest the biggest surprise of the managerial merry-go-round this uh, this time around has obviously been uh, has been company going to uh, Bayern Munich. I mean he was like 8th eighth, 8th eighth choice, 11th choice it's a bit of a strange decision that one uh, for Bayern Munich they, you know they could have gone for some top managers with a, a lot of uh, pedigree and a lot of reputation and uh, a, a track record as well but they've gone with company. So I'm, I'm not so sure about that. I think a lot of people are scratching their heads there. I, I know uh, you would imagine a lot of the Burnley fans are a bit hacked off that that he's gone, sort of left him in the lurch. They've been relegated as well, so they'll be looking for a new manager. 
Uh, but hey, good luck to him. Good luck to him at uh, Bayern Munich. They're they're a great side. Uh, they're uh, um, they've got a lot going for them. You know, they they probably underachieved, definitely under Tuchel uh, last season. But you know, they got to the uh, Champions League semi-finals, uh, and they were pipped to the post by uh, by Leverkusen, of course, uh, in the in the league, who just had one of those amazing seasons, of course. And of course, coming back to the uh, domestic Premier League here. Now we've got shenanigans going on with Manchester City suing the Premier League. This has just come out in the last day or so. Uh, and uh, what's going to happen there? This is all going to uh, sort, sort itself out uh, in the uh, in the coming month or so. Then we've also got the still outstanding charges against Manchester City from uh, the uh, the FA. It's it's heating up. That's for sure. And uh, we'll have to see. You know who who can survive. Some are so some are already stating that maybe the Premier League might not even be able to stick around in its in its current form. I think that's highly unlikely. You know, it's more likely that uh, you know they're going to have to change the rules. They're going to have to modify certain things. There might be some concessions made for any sort of breaches that Man City have uh, made. I mean, who knows? We'll we'll have to wait and see on that. But you know, it's not a good look. That's all I'm going to say. It's not a good look for the Premier League. It's not a good look for the the industry as a whole, and certainly for Manchester City, who who are who are, you know, their name is embroiled with this, uh, you know, time and time again for different reasons, of course. But it's not the kind of thing that you want to associate with your club, is it? Really, you know, you kind of just want to talk about football. You don't want to be talking about irregularities or having to sue uh, the league in which you're playing and also which you contribute to. It's it's bonkers, really. But there we go. Listen, so this is what's been going on in the football world. I mean, let us know your thoughts of... Uh, these managerial appointments and these, yeah, some of the big signings that are already starting to happen, all, all the rumours of big signings as well. And if you've got a player at your club that you know is leaving or staying, uh, let us know as well. Tell us your thoughts of who you would like to come to your club. And if you already have signed a player, let us know. And if a manager has come to your club or left, let us know as well. It's uh, always good to hear the other the other side's point of view. So these are just observations from me. Uh, so I think they're very exciting managerial appointments. It's, you know, a lot of people talk about Mourinho, for, for example, in terms of negative terms. I always think, you know, at least for a couple of seasons, he's really good value uh, in terms of entertainment, in terms of bringing bringing the attention to a club. And I think that's what he's doing. And he's already said, you know, I, you know, it could be a good thing or a bad thing in terms of the uh, the attention I bring to a club. But you know, there's um, it's definitely going to be fireworks wherever he, wherever he is. That's for sure. And uh, let's just see if his uh, does the quality of football uh, will will entertain which it doesn't usually do that but can he bring them uh trophies can he bring them the league title which is you know going to be really important can he uh, win the turkish uh, cup obviously that's going to be uh secondary to the to the league you would have thought but how far can he take them in europe let us know your thoughts uh, in the comments below if you like what i do here don't forget to like and share the video subscribe to the channel and hit the notifications bell for all future videos and i will catch you again on another video coming very soon Bye now.